Good morning and welcome to 8-Bit Tips, the off-weekly show where I teach you everything I've learned about game development over the years. Now then, I'm very excited today because I had originally intended on making today's video about programming, specifically programming in Unreal Engine, Blueprints, uh, a couple other things, but as I was making last week's devlog, there was a design technique I used that I realized would be a much better topic for today's video instead. Design is one of those things that's really difficult to teach because the rules that govern design change so much based on the situation. It can be a real challenge to uh, pin down repeatable things that you can do over and over to make better designs. But that's the whole point of today's video is I'm going to teach you a design technique that is relatively easy to explain, relatively easy to use, and can be used in a whole bunch of different situations. So. Uh, as a quick disclaimer, I do want to say real quick that this is not something I found out about online or read in a book or uh, was taught to me. This is a Destry Design Original, so I'm very excited to share this with you. Let's hop right into how it works. The technique is called the sub-instant design space. And in order to talk about it effectively, I need to talk a little bit about its two parts, which are design spaces and then what sub-instant means. So first, a design space is, as I define it, any part of the play experience that can allow for more engaging design. What the heck does that mean? I've got two examples. The first is a game called Thumper, which, by the way, is a fantastic rhythm game that I highly recommend. Uh, when you load up Thumper, you need to do something which is very common. You need to select a stage. You go to the main menu, press start, press play, select a stage, and then bam, you're off. This process of picking a stage is part of the play experience. It's something that your players have to do when they play your game. And this system of using menus is a really clean way of getting through that process. But I wanted to look at a different game and how they handled the same play experience, which is Cuphead. In Cuphead, you have the exact same play experience of needing to select a stage, but instead of doing so with menus, Cuphead decides to use a hub world. And if you think about it, these two things are exactly the same. They're just handled very differently. One's not better than the other. They're just different. But I wanted to bring up Cuphead specifically because by changing the stage selection design space to an overworld, that creates an entirely new design space. Players now have to navigate this overworld, which means you can start to do things like fill it with secrets, such as this hidden path here. A design space is any part of your game, any part of your game, where you can start to expand and add engaging pieces to it. So if that's the design space part, then what is the sub-instant part? Well, there's a book called Game Feel by Steve Swink. It's a very good book. I highly recommend it. It's got a lot of useful information. The part that I want to focus on today is what we call real-time gameplay or real-time feedback. Uh, basically, if you push a button on your controller and then 30 seconds later something happens, you don't really have a way of knowing that your button press had anything to do with the result. So if 30 seconds is too long, how soon after you do something does it need to have a result before you understand that the two things are connected? Is it 10 seconds? Is it one second? Does it have to be instant? Uh, long story short, the answer is about 170 milliseconds or 1.7 seconds. If you press a light switch and within 1.7 seconds your dog barks, you might accidentally think that your dog barked because you pressed the light switch. So 170 milliseconds doesn't seem like a lot of time, but, and this is the important part, it is enough time for your brain to recognize and register everything that it sees, hears, feels, or smells within that 170 millisecond window. So going back, what is the sub-instant design space? It's a small window where you can press a button and then do whatever you want for the next 170 milliseconds before the result of pushing that button takes place. So let's go back to what I've been working on and you can see that in effect right here. Whenever I press the jump button, immediately the character jumps. Except, and here's the sneaky bit, it's not immediate. It feels instant, it feels like when you push the button, the player just jumps at the same time. But the actual truth is that when you push the button, the player shrinks down for about 170 milliseconds, and then they get launched into the air. It feels instant, and for all intents and purposes, it is. But we've managed to make it go from a strange little pop into the air into a bona fide jump. 
Now, as a note about animation, what makes a jump feel good isn't what the character looks like after they've left the ground. It's the impact and power that gets stored in their legs as they get ready to launch themselves. That's what makes the jump feel good. And that's why adding in this little pop feels so good as a jump action. When you begin working on the visuals and sounds of your game, there are countless places where you can offset, add, or subtract 170 milliseconds. For example, are you going to fire a really big cannon? Then let the sound play 170 milliseconds after the animation does. It'll still be perceived as instant, but it'll recreate that feeling of a heavy shockwave of sound hitting after the cannon has been fired. Now, it is important to say that while this specific design space is really cool, there are a few places where it can break down. The biggest thing is that if your game cares a lot about timing or counting frames, these games would be like fighting games or rhythm games. You should not use this. Since those kinds of games demand that events happen at very specific times, messing with those times won't make the game feel better. It will do the opposite. It'll make the game feel worse and it'll feel unresponsive or laggy or who knows what. But for pretty much everything else, you can play around with the timing to create some really cool effects. Now, I encourage you, of course, to go out and try this in your game, but I also encourage you to try and spot the places that I use it in my game. The next devlog will be next Monday, and I think you guys are really going to like how things have changed by then. So I'll see you soon. I'm going to get back to work now. Thanks for hanging out with me.